So when you see this term, S-O-D, with a little o, what does it mean? Well, it can mean two different things, separation of duties. But sometimes you may also see it written as segregation of duties. And basically, no, it means the same thing. In political terms, it actually be referred to as separation of powers. Now, if you live in the United States, separation of powers is a big deal with the Constitution, meaning that the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial system all have different powers and checks and balances and things that keep it in check. Well, that basically is what separation of duties or segregation of duties is about as well. It's about ensuring that the right people have the right access, but not enough access to bypass any other controls. And controls will be a big word that we'll discuss or that we'll use in this. Let's take an example here. We've got a person who, let's say he's in a role, and we're going to call this vendor payables. So it's a person who can actually come through and make out checks to vendors. We also have an individual or a role defined in the system for vendor management. Now, this particular individual is the company or the people who occupy this role, I should say, are individuals that can come in and define the different vendors. So they create who the vendors are, and this person over here, occupants of this role, then are allowed to make checks or payments to them. Now, let's take an example here, and we're going to have Bob, because I call everybody Bob in these examples. So I have Bob here, and I'm going to make Bob a occupant of this role. So now he can come through and he creates vendor XYZ Inc. And now that this person's inside of there, this particular vendor can submit invoices for particular tasks for certain things. Now, here's where separation of duty comes into play. It's fine to allow Bob to do this, but if I also made him an occupant of this role, well, what can he do? Well, Bob would now be able to go and authorize payment to those invoices. And on the surface, it doesn't look like that big of a deal, except that if we consider that Bob now has the ability to create fictitious companies, such as XYZ, we'll call this fictitious, maybe we should call it Fictitious Inc. Now he has the ability also to come out and submit the payments. So the problem here is, again, that separation of duties, segregation, or separation of power. He has too much power. He can circumvent those controls. He can go around the controls and would now be able to create the company the invoices, and the vendor payables, and pay himself money to this fictitious company. This is why separation of duties is such a big deal. Matter of fact, most of your large compliance or regulatory rules, such as SOX, JSOX, Basel, they all deal with this specific issue of separation of duties. Now, to understand why that's such a big deal, because it doesn't seem that big of a deal here, it's that when you get into the real mechanics of all these different roles with all these different people and all the different tasks, Tasks, this becomes an enormous problem. It becomes this very unmanageable series of roles and assignments that need to all take place and all these different associations that need to take place between them. And again, I'm just being oversimplifying it here, but if you can imagine what's going to happen now with all these possibilities that can be taken into place. Matter of fact, one particular company or one particular analyst firm estimated that companies spend about 63% of their time dealing with that one issue and that it costs them, most companies across the globe, we took all the companies across the globe, it's over $4 billion US in cost in order to manage the simple separation of duties for the US SOX regulation. That's a lot of money to be spending just to manage these separation of duties. So how does Novell help our customers with these? Novell's intelligent workload management software. Intelligence is a very key aspect, and it's a very important aspect of what security does. We help them by automating the process as much as possible. We allow them to put into effect these policies, which we then automate, but then we give them additional tools through things such as the Access Governance Suite and the role-based provisioning module that allow them to manage the separation of duties effectively. Access Governance Suite to provide the modeling and transparency between the business and IT and the role-based provisioning module to enforce those across the various systems that are managed by Identity Manager. So again, separation of duties is a very important issue. It's part of compliance. It's part of just good management as well. And Novell can offer solutions to our customers using the Access Governance Suite and the role-based provisioning module on top 
top of Identity Manager to allow them to automate this. But remember one thing, something that we talked about in the Access Governance Suite Chalk Talks, is that the Access Governance Suite can be used with third-party products as well. So even if they have an existing automation solution or provisioning solution that they've deployed and are comfortable with, you can still come in and offer them a solution to better manage their system through the Access Governance Suite. This has been Justin Taylor with Novell, bringing you another Chalk Talk.